Today we are looking at the properties of parallelograms and there are quite a few that are going to come in handy. Uh, the first thing that you probably know already, uh, it's kind of what defines a parallelogram, is they have two sets of sides and these sides are, well they're parallel, but they're also congruent so they're the same length as each other. So opposite sides are congruent. The way the angles work inside a parallelogram is that angles that are opposite from each other, so they're diagonally across from each other, they're congruent as well. So opposite angles are congruent. The angles that are not opposite, they call these consecutive interior angles. Um, so the angles that are right next to each other. So consecutive angles add up to 180. So if you know one angle in a parallelogram, you can figure them all out. When you have a diagonal that cuts across a parallelogram, uh, the alternate uh, interior angles that are created by that are also congruent. So alternate interior angles formed by a diagonal are congruent. So this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here, this angle right here, congruent to this angle right here. And then finally, the diagonals, if you draw in both diagonals, they bisect each other. So they cut each other exactly in half. So those are properties of parallelograms. Let's see if we can use them to answer a few questions. Here we have a diagram and we've been given one angle here, an angle on one side of a diagonal. Uh, we've got a side of 15 over here. We've got a variable expression over here. Let's see what they want us to find. It says use the information to find the measure of MJL. Well, let's see, MJL. So that's this angle right here that we want to find. The property we're going to use here is the fact that consecutive angles, so angles that are next to each other, meaning this angle and this angle, if you add them together, they have to equal 180. So 80 plus 45 plus whatever it is that we're looking for, so I'll call that x, has to add up to 180. So I'd subtract 80, I'd subtract 45. I think what you'll get there is x equals 55. So this angle right here has to be 55 to make this all add up to 180. Okay, let's uh, see if we can find x next. The property we're going to use here is that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So I can say 5x equals 15. And we solve for x by dividing by 5, we just get x equals 3. So x is 3 there. And then finally we want to find the measure of angle M. So that's this angle right here. And that's not too tough because opposite angles inside a parallelogram are congruent. So if that's 80 up at K, this is 80 down at M. So that is a little bit of work with the properties of parallelograms.